Hey everybody, welcome to another book review for 40K. Games Workshop sent me the new Codex Adeptus uh, Custodes, oh, which is pretty cool. Um, previously, these guys got like a mini Codex in the last edition in the Talons of the Emperor box, uh, which was basically just the Custodes, Sisters of Silence, Contemptor, a Rhino, and a Land Raider. Um, it was the stuff from Prospero Burns and a few other things to make like a detachment. And I got a little detachment sheet and some neat stuff that let you sort of play them as an army. And of course, 7th edition had like detachment-y bits and pieces um, that kind of let you jump around and make what wouldn't feel battle-forged, you know, in the old Force Organization Charter today in the different company styles. Um, so we're gonna take a look at this today. I've come up, I've, I've read through it. It's, there's not, I mean, actually fluff-wise, there's tons of background stuff, which is really cool. A lot of it's uh, merged with what we know from the Horus Heresy books, um, but there's a lot more insight into how the Custodes are operating today, because they've had to add new things, because the Custodes typically didn't leave the Imperial Palace, right? So there's a lot of cool background stuff in here. I'm gonna leave that to the, the lore masters, and we'll talk about it briefly. But the basic idea is that the galaxy's so messed up that the Custodes finally, they, they, they kind of like go out in force to start supporting the Imperial armies. Um, and we're gonna talk about my top 10 things from this book. So I've, I've read through it. I got a kind of a top 10 sort of talking points. We're gonna hang with my patrons um, who are currently sitting in the chat and say hi to all those guys. Uh, I can't promise that my kids won't interrupt us at some point because today is one of those days where it's the weekend and nobody naps on the weekend. Napping on the weekend is for suckers. So no, no promises that Cat or Cash don't just like spontaneously show up and, and bomb through this and either ask for apple juice or just tell me something embarrassing about themselves or me. So yeah, that might happen. So if you don't like kids interrupting live shows, um, actually you guys will be seeing this in the future, it won't be live for you, but it's live for my patrons, then yeah, maybe uh, maybe this isn't for you. But um, yeah, my top 10 talking points, we're gonna throw them one at a time. I'll take some questions from the chat uh, with my patrons who might have some insights or things they want to talk about too. Uh, and that's going to help uh, talk about this newest codex for Warhammer 40k. Uh, so yeah, let's just dive right in and do number one. Number one is um, the Custodian box set. Uh, it makes all your HQs and elites that you're, pr well sorry, not all of them, but it makes your HQs and your elites. So there's not a ton of kit releases for this. There's basically three main ones. There's Trajan Valoris. He's the, let's get into some reflections here. He's the, the Lord Commander, Ooh, this guy right here. And GW's nice enough to send him along as well. Uh, the Captain General, sorry, of the Custodes. Um, the big boss man in charge, he'd be like your Dante, your Logan Grimnar. He's your big, huge HQ choice. He's possibly the most murderous non-Primarch Space Marine-ish guy I've seen in 40k. Um, everything's hits on twos. He's got reroll ones for hits and wins just like uh, Gilliman does uh, for Custodes. And you have to, that doesn't sound amazing on paper until you realize that they do almost everything on twos. <laughs> the entire army hits on twos in melee and in shooting. Um, and wounds on like threes usually against most things because their weapons are super tough too. Uh, and then we've got this, which is the Virtus Praetors, who are the new jet bikey guys who are super cool as well. Uh, I'm gonna build up and paint up. Um, and then last but not least, there's the new Terminators, the Alaris pattern uh, custodian Terminator guys, uh, who I don't have a box set of, but they're the, they're the other new cool thing. <laughs> One of my patrons mail says, can I have apple juice? You mail if you can have all the apple juice you want, you're a grown ass man, you can do what you want, bro. Um, but the reason I thought that the most important thing, or the first thing I wanted to tell everybody was that the custodian guard box set makes all your, your uh, characters basically. Um, is you're gonna wanna buy a bunch of these uh, because of this guy and this guy over here. There isn't a new model for a shield captain or the Vexillaries. And the Vexillaries, they're all broken off now from the actual squad. So before you'd have five man squads and like a guy would carry a banner um, or you'd have like a shield captain as like a, a squad leader almost in the units. Now, this box basically is a battle force. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, and they just advertised that in the community site today. Um, the Custodian Guard box makes you a, um, a, a, a single troop choice or an elite choice, actually, if you want to just have a Custodian Guard. Uh, your Vexillary is an elite choice. Um, and then your, your shield captain, the only way to get him is in this box. So you're gonna end up buying the custodian guard box over and over again to fill out your basic stuff. And when you guys are done this, I'm actually gonna throw up in the video description, um, actually I can do this right now for you, for you guys because the patrons can see it. Uh, the army list I wrote up, I wrote up a 2000 point list that assumes you're purchasing a bunch of things that are like the core boxes basically and how you would break that down to make a 2000 point list. And it effectively boils down to Trajan, three boxes of custodians, 
a bike box and a Terminator box and a Contemptor. And that's 2,000 points. <laughs> and I don't think you, you actually do use all, you use all of it. You use, you have two Vexillaries, a Shield Captain, Trajan, um, three three-man squads, because it's 170 points for a three-man squad of, uh, of the Troop Choice guys. A three-man squad of the Terminators, because that's what you get in the box, and a three-man squad of the Virtus Pattern, uh, Virtus Praetors, um, which are the Jet Bikes. And then you get your Contemptor, and that's it. That's all you have. <laughs> so you've got 15, sorry, You've got nine custodians, no, 12 custodians, actually, it's four, four squads I took. So four squads of the custodians, 12 custodians, a vexillary, or two vexillaries, a character, a Trajan, a dread. Yeah, it's like 15, 16, 17, plus six. It's, it's 23 models, and it's 2,000 points. <laughs> and there's no vehicles. Sorry, there's, there's one, there's the Contemptor. Um, but the bulk of it, like most of your units, are going to come out of that custodian guard box. So if you're interested in just like eyeing them as an allied unit, if you buy the codex, one custodian guard unit is a patrol because it's got an HQ choice, which is a shield captain. It's got a troop choice, which is a custodian guard squad, and it's got a vexillary. And you're going to have to take those vexillaries because those vexillaries are really, really key. They do pretty much everything. Um, and yeah, like it's it's bananas. Like you <laughs> you have so few models. And I'll talk about what I think about that at the end um, when it comes to actually playing the game. But there's some there's some cool stuff about it. There's some inbuilt sort of like problems with it too. I think. Um, next up, number two, you're likely to not have more than one detachment, um, and that's there's problems with that in general. Uh, th the main one is you're almost always going to want to build a battalion. The, the basic battalion is, of course, an, a two HQs and three troop choices. Um, and it gets you, it nets you on top of being Battleforged, which is your three CPs, three more CPs. So you have six CPs. I think it's probably really unlikely you're going to be able to, to operate the army in any other detachment style unless you're taking them as an allied force for someone else. Um, so you could take them as a vanguard and just take like a one HQ, uh, maybe a, some Terminators, a, a Vexillary, and one of the elite choice custodian squads, which are just like a couple more points, and they have a version of Disgusting Resilient on a six, like a Feel No Pain. Um, yeah, like that's, you, you could do that, and it would be one additional CP, so you have four CPs total, but your base cost for that is still relatively high. It's still in like the 700 point range, or you could just take three Vexillaries, but I don't know why you'd ever do that um, at an HQ if you just wanted one more CP. Uh, it, it's just really hard to take detachments outside of that battalion one because they all have like a, a diminished return on the number of CPs you get and they all have you know just you, you have very blocky point chunks in the army for making the army with it so it, you're probably going to build a battalion you're not going to have the HQs to make anything else because you need two for the uh, you're, you're probably going to take Trajan because there's almost no reason not to take Trajan um, and you're then having to take like a shield captain because he's the only other HQ choice um, out of your, your basic Estonian box sets uh, and once you take him, it's it's funny. The only way you can use the warlord traits is if you don't have Trajan be your army leader, or army general. So you have this guy who's the captain general of the, of the custodians. But if you want to use any of your warlord traits, you're probably not taking him to lead the army. You're having someone else be the warlord, so then you can actually get a warlord trait that's not just the one he comes with. So it's a bit strange. Um, it's it's definitely it's definitely interesting, but. Even at 2,000 points, even as an allied force, it, you're going to build a battalion out of it. There's almost, unless you're playing way more than 2k, there's no way you're taking a brigade. Because it's 750 base for, for two shield captains and three three-man squads of guys. So you have 11 dudes and 750 and three CPs. And then you've got another 1250 to go up to 2,000 or whatever your standard game size is that you typically buy. I'm, I'm assuming 2,000 for most people to try and get the army done. That was number two. Number three. You're going to be taking vexillaries. <laughs> <laughs> for a bunch of reasons. And I think in the Imperial Soup Armies, the Vexillary is also going to be the most common guy that you see get pulled out of this army list for, for like, ooh, cool, I'm going to add this to my guard army to make it even more obnoxious. Because dude is just so crazy good. Um, he has three standard options, basically, when you buy him. Uh, I'll start with the Soup one. Uh, Actually, I'll start with the, the one where you're almost always going to be taking him. The reason you're almost always going to be taking the guy is that he has a minus one to hit aura for all custodians, infantry, and bikes. Um, and, and so that's when you have an army as elite as the custodians, my biggest fear with these elite choice armies or these really elite armies, especially Grey Knights and stuff like that, is they just can't, in the modern meta of like just tons of dudes and tons of shots, 
having two plus save and a nice toughness is cool and having three wounds each is cool but you just literally don't have enough wounds on the table those 23 guys i'm talking about in the the army do not have enough wounds to stand up against like two or three rounds of guard shooting really <laughs> like a bane blade could kill half your army in like one round um so that minus one to hit is all of a sudden pushing up your defensive factors and you're probably going to want to because your army can't just stay in the same place they can't this is not an army with enough units where you can just build the the, the dante or the what's his name uh, the asriel style bubble and have everybody sit in and shoot or sit in and fight you're going to need a couple of these vexillaries to like sit with your guys and he's probably going to be a guy who sits in the teleportarium a lot too so that when you decide where your fights are ending up he just shows up with the rest of the army and all of a sudden makes a minus one hit so if you're going first and you're teleporting guys we'll talk about that when we talk about stratagems um he might be a response piece who's going to show up but the reason he's going to show up in soup armies <laughs> and, so, and so sorry that minus one hit luckily they was smart and they made it so that they only had that effect uh custodies units because that would be that would be the one that everybody would be taking <laughs> all the time every time in every imperial soup army um and that one's called the um where is it the vexilla magnifica magnific magnifica yeah um the vexilla imperius is the other one for uh custodies units other than vehicles so you can get your dreads they get plus one of their attack characteristic while within six of them so you have a buff one and you could double down and take one of each like you could if you did want to build like a death star where you're not having them travel around you don't want just two of the minus one to hit ones you might just take a minus one to hit and a plus one attack one, sit them in the middle of your army and just be like, let's do this yellow. <laughs> like just run forward and hope everything works out. Um, but he's so good. Uh, but the soup one, so the one I, I do, I want to talk about, it's going to go in every army, affects all Imperium infantry other than vehicles and adds, uh, sorry, it adds a, a five plus invul save against ranged weapons where they're wholly within nine of the guy. So, so wholly within nine, it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you think about it, he's on a 40 mil base, and that's an 18 inch circle basically that he's in, he's in the middle of oh my god so much guard infantry so much like there's it's just awful it lets it lets non asriel armies um so like basically non asriel space marine armies now have like an invulnerable safe bubble that just sits in the middle of the army against shooting which is typically if you're going to build a shooting death star that's what you're having it for it yeah for like 90 points basically you can give everything a five plus invul which could be just obnoxious it's just, it's just anything with the imperium keyword so it works in all the imperium armies so i'll let smarter people than me decide what the most obnoxious abuse of that is but he's the one that stands out because he's just like uh oh <laughs> here's here's the guy that makes everybody invulnerable all of a sudden uh so it's it's funny because the vexillary the, the the standard basically that comes in the custodian box set this guy in the right there didn't get used very often in the last edition of the game he is the piece i'm glad i have a bunch of <laughs> now uh yeah no he's he's gonna get abused for sure um so let's go to number four and number four is going to be uh you might as well take trajan he's just better <laughs> he's 250 so the base naked shield captain he's hot he's twice as many points as the shield captain and that guy lets you roll ones to hit doesn't let you roll ones to wound um but he's just not as fighty like trajan can go mano a mano with almost anybody and he has one really key ability that almost makes him more worth taking he he has three like seize the moment style abilities on his profile uh and the one that caught my attention immediately because he's he's basically two shield captains but he's not as like he's basically an extra couple guys in your units for this for the 125 points more that he is really or 128 actually than a shield captain with a lance or the a spear he's he's gonna he's so much better <laughs> He makes guys he makes guys real wounds of one which is really key because even if you're hitting all the time Landing those wounds without burning your CPs because this is an army that cannot afford to burn CPs on rerolls um, Is gonna be really huge But his moment shackle one he has a once per game You can choose to do one of three things first he can heal d3 wounds can't do it if he's already dead But he can heal d3 wounds um, at the end of a fight phase he can pile in an attack twice and this guy's got five if he's next to a vexillary six two plus attacks at strength 10 minus 3 d3 dude could just rochambeau almost anything because if you think about the average dice rolls he's two zero rolling ones unless you're one to hit but whatever two zero rolling ones strength 10 so even like demon primarchs he's he's wounding on three zero rolling ones minus three so the average thing's getting a six plus save whatever or they're involved or whatever text in there so let's say they're saving a third of them um so he's hit you five or six times you're down to four wounds now that you've not saved and then those four wounds are turning into about eight wounds 
he can do it all over again and turn those into 16 wounds. If he spikes dice, he could just kill you. So the guy can, he can all, he can cripple a knight basically in one round um, by himself if he does that, if he piles into fights twice. But this is the one that actually was pretty key. It's, it's regain D3 command points when you use a stratagem, but no more than were spent on this stratagem. And you're not going to have a lot of command points in this army ever. I don't think you're ever gonna have more than six without taking allies. If you're playing, and I'm just talking about playing pure gray knights here. You're not gonna have more than six. There's ways to get up to more than six, but it involves you're gonna have to stop right playing pure, pure dudes, pure, pure big boys, at that point, um, and 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 go bigger. He's just he he's kind of like Azrael. You could take a shield captain, but why? <laughs> so so much of what he does compensates for your low model count and your your like not having a lot of guys. Um, to be in different places, or or you're you're not being able to take more than one battalion or more than one um, uh, basically detachment to get your CPs, that he's worth it because he's not he's not a whole other unit more than somebody else unless you're talking about taking a second shield captain. So you can take a, one more shield captain or maybe another vexillary, or you can have this guy that does all this stuff, and his stuff I think is valuable enough that you're going to want to take him. Um, but you have to have a shield captain because you have to have an extra HQ because you have to have two HQs to do a battalion. So he's your first one and then the shield captain becomes the second one. Number five, it's going to be really hard, like really, really hard to spam units because the units are crazy expensive. Like it's really easy to flip through this book and go, oh my God, it's amazing. That guy's so cool. But then when you get to the back and you look at the actual cost on that, you're like, um, what? So like this box set right here, they were the ones I was most excited about. When I started looking at boxes, I was like, oh, it's super cool. Look at, look at these dudes on jet bikes. It's the giant flying, like, they almost look like old Judge Dread bikes that fly. Um, and, and the moment I looked at them, I was like, oh, let's see what they do. And they're amazing. Like, they're super good. You can give them hurricane bolters, and they come with them standard. And if they have hurricane bolters, like, they're all fighty. Like, they're just fighty custodians. So you know what a custodian fights? Like, they fight almost exactly the same. When they charge, they get a little bit better because they're, they're, they're cavalry. But they have hurricane bolters. <laughs> so at 12 inches, and these guys, and they have fly, and they move 14 inches. So they can disengage and shoot. So if you, like, it's cool because they can charge in, disengage, and then shoot somebody. Um, Hurricane Boulders means the three of them have 36 shots, 36 Boulder shots, which sounds really cool, but then you see their, their, their assault launchers, and their assault launchers are amazing. They have an anti-air version, because it's all hitting on twos, remember, right? So like, 36 shots, if you're near somebody that makes you reroll ones, 36 shots hitting on twos means you just hit someone with Boulders 36 times. <laughs> you can like liquefy a unit. Um, but their assault, their assault guns are based, they have melter missiles, so they have eight minus four D6 damage, one shot missiles that will hit on threes because they're heavy, um, but rerolling ones if you have somebody nearby if you keep them inside an aura. Um, and they have reroll filled wounds against vehicles because they're melted, so that's pretty cool. They don't get the 2d6 pick the highest for, for wounds, but they just, they, they, they land a little bit better. Um, yeah, so you have an anti-infantry mulcher, you have a, an anti-tank mulcher. They get flak missiles too that, that are basically anti-air. Uh, where you get plus one hit things with fly. So that means that even though they're heavy, they still hit on twos against things that, that fly. So like demon princes and flying hive tyrants and airplanes and whatever, that things aren't supersonic um, or just that fly in general. Even jump infantry, they hit on twos all of a sudden again. And they're, they're pretty decent. Like they're like, they do multiple damage. There's, I think there's seven minus two D3. Uh, they're not as heavy hitters, but I think they get two shots. Yeah, let me just double check because I don't want to speak out my nose. Uh, or heavy D3, sorry, flak burst missiles. So seven minus one D3. So they're slightly better auto cannons, slightly more random, but slightly better auto cannons. Um, but yeah, no, you're, you're minus one to hit on ground targets. You're not hitting fours against ground targets when you're moving, but you're hitting on twos against things with the fly rule. So, and they can switch between those missiles on either one. Now, the reason it's crazy is that's like a 350 point unit. <laughs> if you give them the assault launchers, they're 350 or 325. They're 315, I think, if you give them the other stuff. And I, I look at that and I'm like, that's three models. Like, yeah, they have five toughness, six wounds each, but that's three models. Like, they're gonna, they're, they might die. They might just get liquefied by heavy weapons <laughs> very easily. Uh, and every one of them going down is 100 points, 105 points base, uh, which is terrifying. So, so yeah, so you're not gonna be able, like, if, if you like that unit, you think it's really good. So think about this, your base battalion cost is 750. One of those units, basically you could take three of those units and that's all you have. You'd have two shield captains, three basic troop choices, and three of those three-man bike units at 2,000 points. There's not a, like, 
it, unsupported, like you, you almost have to invest in support stuff just to keep those things alive because they're not going to be able to, 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 to do much otherwise. And what's crazy is you can get a vexillary on a bike. There's a, there's a piece for that, I'm pretty sure. Um, and there's a vexillary of all three types. There's a Terminator vexillary, there's a bike vexillary, um, and there's the regular vexillary that I just described. So when you take the vexillary for the, where is he? The vexillus praetor. Uh, yeah, he can take all the same ones. Plus one attack, five plus involved with different pyramid infantry, or minus one to hit. And then the Alaris vexillary, I think, can do the same thing. They, they get the same standards, basically. I was just double checking because I didn't actually, I looked at the one standards, and I couldn't remember if they made, if they had all the same ones or not. But yeah, no, it's exactly the same. So you can take, and you can take the shield captains the same way too. So you can take a Terminator shield captain, or you can take a Terminator, uh, a captain on a bike as well. But yeah, no, you get the Vexillus Praetor in Terminator armor, the Vexillus Praetor, and the, oh, there isn't a bike one. Never mind, I lied. There's Virtus Praetors. There's no Virtus, there is no Virtus standard bear, sorry. It's just a standard bear on the Terminator, it's a standard bear on the guy. I was gonna say, you take the standard bear on the, on, the, on, the, on the bike and have him make the minus one hit, and that'd be amazing, but there isn't one. There's just one for regular infantry and one for the Terminators. And the, and the banners do exactly the same thing. I just wanted to double check that, because I wasn't 100% sure. Um, so yeah, so that's that's it. it. There are really good units in the army, and they, are, they look really tasty looking, but it, you're not, there's never gonna be a, an army where you just spam that. Uh, I mean, I guess you could take an army that was, uh, what is it, the Outrider Detachment, where you have two of the Virtus Captains on, on bikes, you take, which are about 200 points each, and then you take a bunch of 315 point squads of bikes as your troops, and you can just have nothing but that. But you're still talking about one, two, five, so 15 bikes probably, and two captains, and that's your whole army. <laughs> so 15 bikes and two captains, that's your whole army. I mean, it's probably pretty good. It's gonna fly around and hit stuff, but it's not, you have no psychic defenses at all. Oh, we'll talk about that in a minute. But we, we have, we, you have no, you have nothing but like that and you only have four CPs. You have no way of getting CPs back. And we'll talk about CPs again in a minute too. So spamming's gonna be pretty hard. Number six, you got great stratagems, but almost no command points. The, the stratagems are so endearing and some of them are so like, I really, really think this is good. So like for instance, from Golden Light They Come, you can put guys in the teleportariums, including bikes and treadnoughts. For one CP, you can do one. For three CPs, you can do two. But think about that. If you use three CPs to put two units in the teleportarium, that's half your CPs gone before the game starts. That's why I'm talking about Trajan being so good, is if you decide to let the game start, he can just get D3 of those back. And you could potentially still start with four, five, or six CPs. He, he offsets that like that completely nerve-wracking expenditure right away. Um, but it's a way to deliver your dreadnoughts. It's an amazing way to deliver the jet bikes, actually, because they can just hunt. And actually, the jet bikes have some real chank where like, they can shoot, charge, and then stay in combat. And we'll talk about that in a minute, because there's a, there's a crazy um, uh, strategy that allows you to basically pile in as if you were a character with your units. And it's a way to keep them in combat. If guys try to fall back away from them, if they go too far, then you just pile back into them at the end of the assault phase, or the end of the charge phase um, for CPs. And then you fly over top and, and just fly closest to a character or something and assassinate it with your, your launchers. Um, there's gonna be some, some sort of jank with that. Uh, you get Ever Vigilant. Uh, which is based on spec scan. A lot of these are duplicates of the Space Marine ones, which is like renamed. So like Evervigilance is just aspect scan. If guys deep striking within 12 of you, you can spend two CPs to shoot them. But like, th and, and Vexilla Teleport Armor, three CPs. Um, you can have a unit, a custodian unit in your army basically get, get custom teleported back to the Vexilla if you want. So like they can move out and then pull back with the teleporter. But it costs three CPs. So, so right here we've got, uh, just on the first page, you've got one, two, three, four, five out of eight that are potentially more than one CP. Because Golden Light and Open the Vaults where you get extra relics, which I don't know why you would because you don't have that many characters, um, except for your Vexillas and your, your Captains, uh, don't cost more than one. The one that I think you might use the most, which is uh, Unleash the Lions, allows you to split your Terminator squads down to units of one, which is super janky because they're th the Sworn Guardians unit Anybody who's a, uh, a custodian, doesn't have to be a troop trace, just literally anybody in the army who's a custodian unit, they have um, objectives secured. <laughs> so they get canceled out by troop traces, but they don't get canceled out by anybody else. So they, the one guy with the Vexilla can just be standing there holding objective against a hundred not troop choice other guys and, and not care and just like take it himself. Um, 
so yeah, so splitting your terminator squads into squads of one when they do strike in means you have to shoot them all individually. There's a, there's a bunch of things, but it costs you two CPs. So if you've only got six, like I said, that's a third of your CPs for the game on on one play, basically, from the stratagems. Um, you have Tangle for Grenades, after the Emperor, Shoulder, shoulder the Mantle's a neat one. You can undo your Warlord kill. So if your Warlord gets killed for one CP, you can have another character in the army just assume command, and you, the other person doesn't get to slay the Warlord, and they get no VPs from killing him. <laughs> Which I think is really funny, too. Counts for no objectives. Um, it, yeah, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but like, it again, on the next page, uh, there's a few 1CP one ones, but like Insca Inescapable Vengeance, which is, uh, you can shoot characters with attacks, even though they're characters. <laughs> For 2CPs, you just kill the characters, ignore the targeting rules. Uh, Sentinel Storm, uh, choose one of your Adviscus Cody's units, it's within one of the enemy unit, and they can shoot Sentinel Blades, even though you're in, in, the, like, in the shooting phase, in melee. So you can shoot units up close, basically, even though you're in melee. Um, and then, like I said, again, you've got tons of these that are cut like basically copies of the other Imperial ones. Um, take a shot before you die, stuff like that. But you have very few CPs. I think this comes back to what I was talking about earlier with you're only gonna have one detachment, a six CP army, and again, why you wanna take Trajan, a six CP army is gonna really struggle to, to get the most out of their stratagems because you're just, you're not, you don't have the resource pool to do it. And that's, I'm gonna come back to that in a later point. Uh, number seven, Battleforged helps a little bit. So what Battleforged does for you, it gives you the thing I said earlier, which is it gives you objective security, gives you boots on the ground for all your custodians units. Um, I think it's, uh, sorry, I shouldn't say all units, I think it's infantry and bikes, or it might actually just be everything with the objective custodians keyword, which would then be everything. It's infantry and bike units in the Ask Custodians Army. They gain Sworn Guardians and Emperor's Chosen. And then Emperor's Chosen just gives you plus one invulnerable safe. So all your guys natively have a five plus invul, Every guy gets a four plus invul if they're like an infantry or bike guy, just from being, just from being dudes. Um, <laughs> it's it's gonna be kind of 40k hard mode, and that does help a little bit. So you you do get some benefit from being battleforged from taking a detachment of just pure custodies. Again, it's you, you you're gonna get that as a bonus, but remember you're gonna have a really small command point pool if you decide you're gonna just take that detachment. Now you'll still get all those in in the detachment that they're built in, but. There's purists out there that are gonna to wanna to play purist custodies. I'm gonna play pure custodies, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, but I'm acknowledging from the get-go that I'm inherently restricting myself for a couple of reasons. Number eight, uh, you got cool relics, but you only got a couple people to give them to. So for instance, your Vexillas can all take Storm Shields, but then they get no other weapon, which almost disqualifies them for like half of the relics that are weapons. Because most of the weapons, or most of the relics are attached to either a, a, a unit type or a weapon type. Um, and you're not gonna have, if you take Trajan, that's one less character. So, for instance, in my army, I'll have probably two Vexillas and, and a Shield Captain. I've only got three guys, potentially, that can, I can give relics to. Um, some of them are super cool. The Gatekeeper, which is a Guardian Spear, it's just an extra sort of like cool on Overwatch tax. So he's got Rapid Fire 3 instead of Rapid Fire 2. So he's getting six 3 plus Overwatch shots with it. And it's still minus one, two damage. So. It's pretty neat. I'd probably give that to the shield captain. Um, I, there's other things I might, because if he's not gonna be my warlord, he might be my warlord just because I can use a warlord trait that way. Um, it, it's pretty neat. Raymond of Soros, uh, roll D6 every time an infantry or biker guy is killed within six of them. And it's basically your your old chapter standard. On a four plus, they can um, basically take a shoot or fight in the fight phase or whatever. Um, Eagle's Eye. Invul save goes up by one, so your four plus becomes a three plus. So even without a storm shield, you have a three plus invul save. Eagle's eye is probably going to be pretty common. You're probably going to get one one relic. That one you can give to your shield captain and have him fight with good melee weapons and not have to buy a storm shield. So that one, and there's another one which is uh, minus one to hit armor save. <laughs> uh, the Auric Aquilas biker model just give them a native three plus save. So you're going to take the biker captains. That one's a good one. In addition, you can reroll filled charge rolls for that guy. So that's pretty cool because he can go and take the overwatch shots from somebody, like a like a big thing, and then pile into it. And you know, like he charges the Lehman Rust, he goes first, gets gets the charge off, and then everybody else follows him in. Um, Praetorian Plate, choose a friendly Imperium character, so it doesn't have to be usually any Imperium. Uh, if they get charged, you just teleport into base to base with them within an inch and then fight in the fight phase. Uh, Veiled Blade, it's a guy with a Sentinel Blade only, it's a guy with a Storm Shield usually. Uh, it's got Pistol 2, shooting, strength 4, uh, minus 1. Abilities, every time this fire fi uh, bear fights while they're within 3 of an objective marker, they get 2 additional attacks, just a plus 2 attack sword. 
Emperor's Light, which is a guy with a little misericordia, a little stabby dagger. Um, it's every time he fights, you can make additional attack with it. Um, unless he's also equipped with the Storm Shield. In addition, add one to any morale tests taken by enemy units within 12. So it makes you scary. It's a scary stabby knife. Uh, Wrath Angels, so the Vexilla Magnifica, which is the minus one to hit one. Um, the Wrath Angelus replaces that uh, banner. Uh, instead, friendly Imperium infantry and bike units within six inches of the barrier in the morale phase automatically pass morale tests. Um, and where is it? It's once per battle if the bear does not move. You roll d6 for every unit from your foe within six and subtract one from the result of the unit being rolled as a character or two if you're being rolled as a custodian on a four plus, they'd suffer d3 mortal wounds. It's basically an exploding standard that might cause mortal wounds. Orc Shackles. Uh, your opponent must subtract minus one from the attacks characteristics of enemy characters that are within six inches of the bear. Uh, in addition, the mission that uses victory points if the character slays the winning world in the fight phase, get an additional D3 because he, he's a space cop and he shackles him down. Um, if you have a Terminator and you got a Ballesteris grenade launcher, um, he gets a special strength 10 grenade to assault one. Makes guys super dead. Uh, Fulminaris Aggressor, which is a, um, a fixable defender. There's basically three different magic standards you can take. Um, it loses the, the other Vexil ability and instead friendly Imperium infantry and bike units within six. Automatically pass morale and has a gun. <laughs> it turns into a gun. It's an eight inch range, assault D6, auto hit flamer basically. And you can use it in melee at plus two strength, minus one, one damage, which means you can take a storm shield with it too. Castellan's Mark, if the bear's on the battlefield at the beginning of the game, um, before the first turn, uh, you can remove them and up to one friendly Adeptus Cassidy's units within six and set them up in the following mission rules. You must set them up on the battlefield. Um, so you can just move a unit, basically. And then Faith Absolute models the Vexilla Magnifica. Um, it replaces their um, regular Vexilla. Again, you pass Maroc test automatically. And the bear can attempt to deny the witch uh, once per enemy phase if they were a Psyker. That one might be really popular uh, when we get to my next point, because my next point kind of kind of jumps on that. <laughs> um, and that is that... You got zero psych defense to stop tech powers. <laughs> so every every guy in the army gets a six plus invulnerable save, basically a six plus shrug against mortal wounds caused by psych powers. He's just, he believes that much that he can't be harmed. Um, but you got nothing to turn off the tech powers. So nothing that like makes you minuses to hit. I, I don't think it's just like, a, I call them tech powers, but they're powers that have effects that aren't just damaging you or causing mortal wounds or anything like that. You've got nothing to stop them unless you take something from outside the army. Or that banner. <laughs> that's it. That's that's really what you got. Um, there's a warlord trait that lets you do it too. I should say you've got uh, where is it? Uh, impregnable mind, and that's actually the reason to take a warlord um, that has uh, that has that's not what's his name. It's not Trajan because then you can take impregnable mind <laughs> to have one of your to have one of your shield captains basically be an anti psyker not a psyker. Um, the auto pass from morale test is nice too for the banner. So you could potentially natively in the army list get two denies. There's zero other ways of denying. So so those are the only two things that are, are gonna help you to, to stop all those weird techie powers that could just mess you up. Uh, you have no built-in psychers in the army list without taking something like outside outside like space brain psychers um, or adept telepathic and stuff like putting in a small supreme command with your leftover points and stuff. Um, uh, tra sorry, if you do take Trajan, he gets Champion of the Imperium, which is friendly custodies, infantry, bike, and dreads within 12. At the start of the charge phase, can make heroic interventions as if they were characters. And that's an important one, uh, which means that if someone falls back, sorry, if someone's within three of you, not within one, you basically just get to try and heroically intervene at the end of the psych phase. So if someone walks close, you're being like close quarters, and someone doesn't want to charge you, um, and it's at the beginning of the charge phase too, which is really neat. Where is it? at the start of your opponent's charge phase. If they walk too close in three, you're gonna count as charging because you heroically intervene. And it's not a, it's it's a command trait that, that cause it's really good, but then you got one less psych defense. It's a command, it's a warlord trait that Trajan just like gets to pull people in. Um, and they're all, it's within 12, so it's a 24 inch bubble where that happens. So if they come too close to so like guarantee the charge, you can just counter charge for free at the start of the charge phase, which is bonkers. Um, but yeah, so like I said, without taking, without either get, losing one of your minus one hit banners and taking, you know, auto pass morale, but this thing can deny the witch, or having, losing that counter charge ability, not having Trajan be your warlord and taking out a, a shield captain, there's not any way to just take our psych powers without taking some kind of allies. Uh, and that leads me to the last one. And the last one is, um, you're probably gonna have to take allies. 
<laughs> to play competitively in like a competitive meta or to try and play in like the current like the current sort of like I, I guess the way the game's going towards Death Star's overlapping or as large armies your unit counts low you got some strategy, some strategy stuff you can do to, or some uh, strategic stuff you can do to get around that, but cost CPs, which is a limited resource. You have limited CPs. It's a great, like, you can, so to take guard allies to get you a ton more units, like literally triple your model count, <laughs> I could take three guard squads and, and, a, and a pair of uh, guard commanders. That clocks in at 180 points. So for 180 points, I get three more CPs and 32 more models. <laughs> You're probably gonna see most Custodes players go to events, they're gonna take allies. They're gonna take some kind of allies. Um, even if it's just that and then a supreme command of like three psychers and a Caluxus. Uh, that's gonna be pretty common, I think, is, is, is if you just build up to like 1,700 points, that last 300 points is gonna buy you the things your army doesn't have, which would be four more CPs in that case. So if you just took naked guardsmen, which is all you really want, because you want bodies standing around and, and guard stuff and garrison stuff, uh, two commanders to shout at them. <laughs> That's one, sorry, it's uh, 120 plus 60, so 180. Um, 150 for three more, uh, you know, primary psychers for a Supreme Command, and let's say 95 for a, uh, so 250 plus 180, 320, so it's 180 plus, I just completely lost the math in my head. 180 plus 250, it's 400-ish points if you want to take both those things. So then take 1,600 points of custodies and go, do your, do your thing. So if you think about it, for those 450 points, you're getting 430 points. No, it's 400, 450 points. I've, I've lost the math in my head again. <laughs> for, for those points, basically, you're getting 32 plus four, 36 more models, four more CPs, uh, more boots on the ground, access to more stratagems because you use all the guard stratagems all of a sudden. Um, a Colossus to not to, to be like to stop smites from hurting you. Uh, a trio of dispels. Like it, you just become you become infinitely more durable and play towards like the current edition of the meta. And I'm pretty sure that 650 points, sorry, 1550 points of of custodies are still pretty good. <laughs> and you're not taking weird things you might not normally take. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna play that way to start. <laughs> I do have everything to play that way later if it's not gonna work out. Um, but to start off, I'm gonna try and just go 2,000 points of custodies and see what happens. I don't think it's gonna go very well, but but we'll see. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun because it's 40k on hard mode. It'll be like playing my knights. Every, like Because they're just like the knights. They look really great on paper and they're really killy and they're gonna kill lots of stuff. But the long game of playing for the objectives, because games work, uh, sorry, games work, Warmer 40k is turning into war machine scoring, stand in a place, especially in, in chapter 2017 where everything's progressively scored. It's just how long can you stand in a place holding up a spot? Um, other armies are, are just built better to do that. For, for the whole game, for a long time. Um, they do have some built-in tech where like, if it's not a troop choice doing it to them, or you know, Battle for a troop choice, which is boots in the ground kind of stuff, uh, it'll, be, it'll be harder, but, or you can hold it because you have the, the Sworn Guardians rule. But I guess we'll see how it goes. <laughs> but I have everything I need to build 2,000 points. I got three boxes of the Custodian Guard, um, or two unbuilt ones, and then my one from uh, Prospero Burns. I got a box of the bikes, I got Trajan. I got some, some dreads. I got a Land Raider kicking around. We'll, we'll see how you do. Got to get myself a can of Retributor Gold Spray to save some time. Some couple pots of the Nelmo or the Agrax Earth Shade Gloss <laughs> and we'll jump in. So that's it. That's my 10 things you need to know about um, the, uh, the, the new Adepsis Custodes box or uh, Codex uh, from GW. And I hope you guys enjoyed that. The Adepsis Custodes look really cool. I'm excited about the fluff in general in this book. Uh, it's on pre-order right now from User Workshop's website along with all the new kits and stuff. I do want to buy a box of the Terminators because they look neat, just to try that stratagem. Um, and that's like the only thing I think I'll add after what I paint right now, because they're, I don't have them. Because <laughs> they're not out yet, so we'll see how it goes. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna chat with the patrons for a little bit and see what kind of questions they've had while I've been rambling on. Uh, and then I don't hear my kids fighting. They might have fallen asleep. They're watching Wally right now. I'm hoping, I'm hoping they're either just having a chill time or they've not fallen asleep. Um, 
Uh, Black Widow was asking, do the nor Hurricane Boulders get the minus one AP that normal custodians Boulders do? No, they're just Hurricane Boulders. They're normal Hurricane Boulders like everything else. The, remember, the Boulders on the Guardian Spears aren't Bolters, they're Guardian Spear guns. So they have like a different name and they do something different. Uh, like just like the combi bolters that are on the uh, Contemptors are just regular combi bolters. So yeah, just a regular old Hurricane Bolter, 24 inch range, rapid fire six, strength four, zero save mod, one damage. Um, typically I'm finding in this edition if something has a name and it has the same name across codexes, it doesn't have different stats. I can't think of any corner cases where that's not true. But she says, oh man, I just built a shield captain. Well, it's good because you need one. So, so keep one for sure. <laughs> Don't not build a shield captain. And remember, all the minimum squad, got, like, squad sizes for everything is three. So no matter if you build some of the, the, the fancy dudes out of your guardian boxes, you need those guys anyway. Um, and you might end up with some odd numbers. Like I have 15 guys. I'm still in my head trying to decide if it's better to take the odd, to take to make, make four three-man squads of, of custodies or to take one make three four-man squads where one in each squad also has a storm shield just to like tank last cans and stuff like that because i think that's going to be important i think that's that's the that's my one cp reroll is when i get shot with the last cannon and, and the one that i fail i cp reroll each turn that's where i'm looking at probably using my cps try and keep that guy left just like tank the, the super hits so we'll see how it goes uh, Malev says, my Imperial Army is pretty much a full scout force with bullet absorbing goodness. Maybe my terrible scout force will combo well with the expensive models. Probably will. <laughs> Mike Feeling says, gotta go. Save, man. Hope you enjoy watching the game. Um, Ape Jesus says, it'll be amazing way to drop Telemon on the board if they're poured over to 40k. Oh, yeah, you're talking about the, um, the Forge World stuff. Yeah, the one thing I can't comment on is I haven't looked at the Index Imperium 2 Forge World book or the... Uh, it, I can't remember what it's called. Whatever the whatever the Forge World Custodies rulebook is, uh, and know how it's going to interact. But you can't do vehicles, so you can't take the Telemon because it only says Dreadnoughts, bikes, and infantry. Um, so the Telemon wouldn't be able to go. Yeah, but you could do the cool, the super cool, big, venerable, the 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 the, the, the super contemptors basically, who are really neat. Uh, where is it? The from Golden Light they and it's a max of two, right? Because it's one for one or three for two. Yeah, because there's infantry, biker, dread. So if that thing doesn't sit in the dread, any of those classes, you can't do it. Uh, Maylove says, I'm starting to like the way this army sounds. Come across an army that requires you to pull off strats rather than just playing spreadsheet hammer. That's going to be it. <laughs> it's like, it's, they've clearly thought about it and they've built in the stuff to do it, but it's not going to be easy. You're going to get punished. It's just like, honestly, it, people, com people would complain sometimes about watching me play with my knights, but I really enjoy playing them because they're really challenging to play because you have so few pieces. Like, it's not easy to pull off a, a current edition game of 40K playing with very few models because it's all about standing in a place and doing something like I could take like I, pl I played a game against uh, Owen recently and I won't tell you how it goes but I'll tell you that like the result because of the way the game wins even though one side died completely it was a massive victory point skew because it was just standing in a place holding objectives so even from like the third turn once I was just being punished but they basically already won the game because they're eight I had like eight VPs uh, Black Widow says I thought I could resist the army and then you reminded me that the Forge World stuff is coming over too yeah it's true uh, Anthony Lee's joined in. How many CPs are you likely to have though? It sounds like it's unit cost, sounds perverted. Probably six. You're almost always gonna have six, I think, unless you take allies. Uh, guard allies, that's potentially a direction I'll head. Custodians are weak at dealing with long range threats. You're gonna have to guard allies if you wanna play with these guys competitively. Um, probably a Supreme Command, and then so an Imperial Soup Supreme Command to get your Assassin as well, because the Kluxus is really important against Smite Spam and Smite Spam. These guys are gonna have a hard time with it. They only get their like, they have no defense. <laughs> Against against psychic ones, sorry, the six plus psychic shrug against the mortal wounds from Spanos, but that's like that's nothing. That might as well be nothing unless you've like super clutch rolled. Uh, Anthony says, seems like Estonians would make great allies for an Imperium force, but are points of Well, yeah. So for instance, if you were to take this box and just make the patrol out of it, it would be one twenty two plus one sixty eight is two ninety. Uh, plus 95 for the vexillary. So for 385 points, you get this box and it's a patrol. So you can take it as a, an ally detachment. So basically for a 400 point chunk of your army, if you wanna have a custodies thing, there you go, done. You can add the dreads, you can have the bikes, whatever from there. It's not gonna get you any more CPs, but you're gonna get some pretty cool fighting guys, <laughs> which would be pretty awesome. Uh, APG says, does the Land Raider still have an invulm? Depending whether or not to paint my custodies gold or yellow like Lamenters. Um, it, I think it does. I think it's still got the venerable thing. A venerable Land Raider. Unyielding Ancient, six plus save against all damage. Period. 
the Wardens get that too, which is the elite choice version of the Custodians. They get a 6 plus strike against all damage. And I think that's it. Any more questions, guys? Uh, Anthony says you're going to do some Custodies with House Metallum. No, I'm just going to do Custodies in general, and House Metallum might ride along with them at some point. <laughs> might go the other way around, where the, the, the Duders join them. Um, and I think we're done. Oh, there they are. And that's why we sign off. Hey, guys, are you guys done watching Wally? <laughs> Yeah, all right, everybody say hi. Say hi to the munchkins. You guys say hi too. Say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> well, that was perfect timing. Why is there lights here? So that people can see daddy when he talks. Oh, all right. Did you get Can you guys, hey, can you guys say thanks for all our food? Thanks for all the food. Thanks for all of our food. <laughs> thanks for all the food and things that you guys give us. Uh, awesome patrons. I know, wow, what timing, right? May Love's like, this is a great time. Hey, no playing with the lights. Well, the demo crew's here. Yeah. So I guess it's, I guess, it's, yeah, we will do another stream tomorrow. Oh, we're turning off lights. Leave those alone. <laughs> you guys are losing it. No, no, no. We knock it off. <laughs> you guys are the worst. All right. We've, we've officially hit peak kid time. Hey, leave it on. Daddy needs it on. Don't touch. Why Thank do you. we have paper on it? Because um, that's called diffusing light. So anyway, yeah. big thanks to you guys. Yeah, I'll have, I'll have another stream tomorrow. Yeah, buddy. I want the butterflies. You want the butterflies? Okay, we'll get the butterflies in a minute. Yes. Okay, have a picture. Great timing. Have a picture. <laughs> so anyway, thanks to you guys so much for being patrons um, and for all that you guys do. Uh, these guys appreciate you too. Uh, and of course, for you guys watching this in the future, um, these are the ones that the Patreon feeds. <laughs> <laughs> Being able to stay home with these guys and do all the fun stuffs um, is what this is all about. So I hope you guys are uh, having a great day. Uh, if you watch this in the future, I hope you enjoyed the review. Uh, and we'll see you tomorrow, Monday, for my other live stream. I'll be doing my usual YouTube piece of ash, uh, sitting and chatting. So if you, if you guys think of more questions going forward about the Custodies book um, or anything else, jump on and chat at me then. It'll be at, hi, it'll be at 12.30 Eastern Standard Time, right? Dad, what? Mommy's moth is, is up Today. It is, yeah. Mommy's moth is hung up. I bought my wife the moth from Silence of the Lambs, like I like, like preserved one. Don't ask. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you for more of this in the future. Who are you Ash. talking to? I'm talking to the camera. Say bye bye. Say happy war gaming. Hi. Say happy war gaming. Happy war gaming. <laughs> what? Why is happy war gaming? It's what you say to say goodbye to everybody. Who likes to war game. One more time. One, two, three. Happy, happy war gaming. Happy, war gaming. Happy, happy boy gaming. <laughs>